Welcome to another edition of the Penalty Box with yours truly, Kalel Oakman. Ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news. The Penalty Box has been picked up for an additional five more episodes. That's right, five more episodes of your favorite up-and-coming show, The Penalty Box. A no holds bar show that lets you find out exactly what's going on in the VHL. Not up to the minute. This isn't live. We're not going to do score tickers and all that stuff. No. Instead, what we're doing now in the penalty box for you is not only do we interview owners and players of the like, we also take requests from our viewers. Later in the broadcast, I will share with you how to contact us here at the penalty box. If you have any show ideas, questions, comments, concerns, anything, we read them all. We may not air them all, but we will read them all. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, another VHL exclusive. Biohizzle stops by with an interview with yours truly. But before we get to that interesting interview, there are some things I'd like to clear up first. First of all, I know a lot of you were thinking this, the beginning of this announcement, 30 teams with 17-man rosters, how is the league going to handle this? How are the players going to handle it? Are owners going to go, oh my god, what am I going to do? No, in fact, tonight... Opening night went off without a hitch. As far as I am concerned, and as far as the information coming to my desk right now, there wasn't a single game that was canceled or delayed majorly due to the amount of people or, you know, the size and the, the magnitude of what's going on right now. That is a good thing. Also, what else is going on in the VHL is very interesting. The launch of the VHL Network. Can you believe it? Now you get to watch your favorite shows, your favorite games. If you can't make it to the stadium, you can watch it. VHL Network for the first time ever. Oh, I loved it. It's a brilliant idea. And i am just got one question. What the hell took you so long? But not only do you have the launch of the VHL Network, you also have your favorite radio show, Pro Shop Talk with Frank and BP. And frankly, those two guys, they know their hockey stuff. And if you have something to say against it, get the puck out of here. More on that in a moment. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, our interview with Biohizzle. Um, so, as a long-standing member of League Arena and VHL, how do you feel the VHL will be this season? Well, I can say as a long-standing member of the VHL, it's going to be a crapshoot, in my opinion. I mean, there's 30 teams, 17 guys on a team, 30 AHL teams. It's just going to be mayhem this season. And um, in my opinion, I think things will be interesting. 30 teams, one cup. That is definitely, you know, raise the stakes. And I just hope that it all works out in the end. Can you share with our viewers how you plan to lead Columbus this year. What are your expectations for this season? I plan to lead Columbus this year, you know. I, I hope at least the playoff spot. You know, like, uh, everyone wants to win the Cup, and I'm no different, that's for sure. But um, I plan on, you know, leading by example on and off the ice, you know, keeping everyone together. Uh, I still got to find an AHL captain to get, you know, but I'm, st I'm always going to be looking at the AHL. I'm always going to have people going up and down, you know, being sent around. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that this season is looking good for my team. Um, you know, some of the players on the team may not be known to other people in the league, but, you know, it's just a matter of time before they all make an impact. And um, I believe that uh, this year may be the year that, you know, the expansion Blue Jackets make the playoffs and actually, you know, prove to everyone that, you know, we're a team to be reckoned with. I mean, uh, beta season two, when I was an owner, things didn't go that great. I can admit that. But this year, I feel really good about the team, and I believe that we will make the playoffs and have a good run in it. Um, even if we're an eight seed, I wouldn't count us out any time. With Detroit in your division, how do you and your players feel about going out against the current champs? Well, I haven't talked to the rest of my team about Detroit being in our division. I believe that since they're the, you know, the reigning Stanley Cup winners, that, you know, they obviously have everyone's respect. Um, you can't go into a game expecting to win against them, that's for sure. You're going to have to work hard, you know, and uh, really work the puck around. And that's, that's the most important thing is you can't let them lock in on you. You can't let them, 
you know, get all over you during the season, you know. If uh, you let them get to a big lead and you don't try to catch them, then they may run away with it again. They may get a good spot in the playoffs and they may have an easy ride to the finals. And I hope to not let them do that, you know. To me, Detroit is probably our biggest rival in our division just because they are the reigning champs. And, you know, they kept a lot of their core crew who uh, helped them be successful last season. Besides winning it all, what would be the best accomplishment for you and your squad this season? Um, other than winning it all, what would be our biggest accomplishment? Um, I don't know about the team, but I would love to make the playoffs for the first time in my career. That would be really nice. I'm not even going to lie there. But um, I, I think... I think the playoffs are an obvious um, goal that all of us have. You know, if you make the playoffs, you can at least, you know, talk about it as being a good season for the team, one where you didn't go backwards. And, um, you know, I, th th I don't think you're getting, you know, draft position anymore. I don't, I don't think the lowest team is going to get first pick unless they change up something or whatnot. So, um, you know, and unless they do something like that, there's no good reason to be in last place, and I definitely want to be nowhere near that. Um, like I said, I'd be happy if we snuck into the playoffs. I'd be even more overjoyed if we went in as the first, second, third seed, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it would be great to get in the playoffs, and that's probably the biggest goal we have. And finally, who, in your opinion, is the biggest goon going into this season? <laughs> who is the biggest goon? Um... I have to say it's probably a toss-up between Darth Forsberg and TV Tiny. They are both known for being a total goon. Uh, they're both very hard to play against, and it can take you off your game, that's for sure. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see if someone else steps up and tries to be, you know, a Goon of the Year award winner. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably between Forsberg and Tiny, and I, I can't pick one. Thank you, Baya Hizzle, for appearing on the penalty box, and best of luck to you this season. Thank you for having me on the show. You know, I, I look forward to having a great season this year and uh, keep up the good work on the show. Bye. Well, that's all we have for tonight on the penalty box. But in the next two episodes, I have two major interviews. Next episode, I have an interview with the captain of the Providence Bruins, a guy named Knights of God. And then also, it's been delayed a couple weeks due to a little mishap, TBU the Tiny stops by the penalty box. Here is a little snippet of that interview, exclusively on the penalty box. Thanks for watching the penalty box tonight, folks. Stay tuned for further episodes. Good night. Remember, meet you at Center Ice. Have a good night.